All right, good morning, everybody. I will call this regular meeting of the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to order. It is our regular meeting uh, for November. Uh, I'm Paul Sagan from Cambridge. I am the chair. We'll introduce ourselves to the members of the public. Thank you all for coming. Marianne, why don't we start with you? Good morning. Mary Ann Stewart, Lexington. Michael Moriarty, Holyoke. Hannah Tarecki, Marblehead. Uh, Jeff Wolfson, Acting Commissioner. Jim Pizer, Secretary of Education. Amanda Fernandez, Belmont. Margaret McKenna, Boston. Marty West, Newton. Ed Doherty, Boston. Thank you all. Um, expecting member Craven momentarily and, and member uh, Vice Chair Morton will not be able to join us this morning. Wrong, please correct me when you come up. Cecilia Doucette, Adam Goldberg, and Judith Hool. Just easier if you all come up and sit down and we don't do one and then two and then three just so that we can move through things. Uh, obviously, you are welcome to give us any written testimony or follow-up documentations. I know some people have provided things in advance. We have them in our folders. Um, welcome and thank you all for coming. Um, take people in alphabetical order. So, Ms. is it Doucette? It is. Thank you. Thank you. And I would just say, please move the mic over because we are live streaming and people also sit in another room and they can't hear you if you're not mic'd. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Cece Doucette from Ashland. As former Ashland Education Foundation president and Ashland's grant coordinator, I brought a lot of wireless technology into our schools. Then an electrical engineering friend indicated there could be biological hazards from wireless technology. So we began to investigate. We discovered thousands of studies linking the radiation from wireless technology to cancers, DNA damage, infertility, and autism. In the short term, many children and adults are suffering from headaches, insomnia, nosebleeds, skin rashes, brain fog, behavior issues, fatigue, anxiety, depression, and more. Our world experts indicate that children and fetuses are especially vulnerable and are calling for hardwired technology access in school with no wireless or cellular, except in emergencies. Lloyds of London and others have identified wireless radiation as a leading risk and put exclusionary clauses in their policies. By exposing children to Wi-Fi in school, the Commonwealth may be assuming legal liability for harm. There is already a federal lawsuit at the Fay School in Southboro where children have become ill. After reading the legal fine print that comes with all devices, Ashland became the first public school district in the nation to post this sign in each of our classrooms. Worcester and other districts are examining this issue too and are awaiting public health fact sheets from the Department of Health that Dr. Bob Knorr is developing. Massachusetts leads the nation with seven bills to address this issue. You may find the executive summary and EMF points of confusion versus fact sheet helpful, and I will send this electronically to everybody. The good news is we don't have to reinvent the wheel to protect our students and staff. The Collaborative for High Performance Schools has specific low EMF best practices, and EMF stands for electromagnetic fields. That's the radiation that all of our Wi-Fi and wireless devices emit. We would also do, oh, also Maryland has already issued a school report recommending hard wiring in our schools. We would do well to develop short-term plans to begin reducing exposure as soon as possible, perhaps through power reduction, and establish task forces in each school to develop hard wiring plans. In colleges and boarding schools, we should remove wireless from the dormitories as the radiation disrupts the body's ability to cell repair and regenerate during sleep. Brookline was instrumental in helping the International Firefighters Association prohibit cell towers on the fire stations because the firemen were becoming ill. We should likewise prohibit any kind of cell antennas anywhere near our schools. The nonprofit Wireless Education has built online courses to quickly train our schools. Many communities in the Commonwealth are scheduling screenings of a new film called Generation Zapped. I've been granted permission to host a screening with you and will reach out to see if you'd like to coordinate a viewing. Retired Microsoft President Frank Clegg has sent in testimony for the seven bills in Massachusetts. I've put together a packet for each of you 
starting with a children's book because we're all starting at the beginning with this conversation. Um, but this will be a nice little primer to get you started. I've also included the press release on the Massachusetts bills as well as the EMF points of confusion versus fact sheet, the testimony sent in from Microsoft President Frank Clegg, and a tip sheet from the Environmental Health Trust for how today we can begin protecting our children and our families. Thank you. Thank you.